Hi Leo, welcome to your reading for October 2024. How are you? How did you get on with that full moon in Pisces? That was on the 18th of September. Feel free to share. If I sound a bit funny today or I keep pausing, it's because um, I think I've caught a cold or I'm catching a cold and I also burnt my throat tasting food yesterday. So I literally feel like I've scarred my throat. I don't even know how, but... um. Yeah, it is what it is. Well, I know how it happened, but it's just one of those where it's like, really? I really did that? Anyway, so um, just to bear in mind as well with this reading, it is for October, as I said, but there's a new moon solar eclipse in Libra on the 2nd of October and Pluto finally goes direct in Capricorn on the 12th of October, which if you've watched my other videos, you'll know I'm ecstatic about. I'm hoping it brings some helpful shifts you know, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We can't predict 100% what's going to happen, but any stuck energy, hopefully it should get things, get the ball rolling. Because I did say um, during September that with Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn, we could be reliving some old stories. I can 100% vouch for that. Done it, doing it. So yeah, hopefully things can start moving forward again. Right now, in terms of your pre-reading meditation, I did that, but even before that, so I had to pop out this morning and get some stuff from the shop. And on the way back, I was just sort of planning, right, which readings have I got to do today? So you're my last but one. It's just you and Aquarius left. And I was thinking, should I see if I can get any messages while I'm just having this little walk, um, walk home? And I got the image of a feather on the floor in my head. And then the thought that came next was birds of a feather stick together and then the Billie Eilish song birds of a feather came in now I'm I'm not like a Billie Eilish fan I don't really know her music in fact to be frank if you ask me to name one of her songs that's the only song that I could name and I actually do really like it um I've seen quite a lot of cover versions of it I mean I love cover versions in general anyway because I love when people um play their own instruments and etc so I've seen a lot of covers but I actually do really like the song um so yeah, that came to mind and I feel that's for you and Aquarius. So yeah, bear that in mind. You might want to listen to the song, look up the lyrics if you don't already know it. And that may mean something to you. It could be someone's favorite song or someone could feel very inspired by it. In terms of your specific pre-reading meditation, the first image I got was just a glass of milk. <laughs> and I was like, what, really? And then I kind of got this thought of someone saying, it's just a plain glass of milk. It's just a plain old glass of milk. But then I could see it was as if there was this concept of, yeah, it's a plain old glass of milk, but you can do a lot of different things with it. Like, well, first of all, it's nourishing to newborn babies, isn't well, not necessarily the, um, a glass of milk, but breast milk or formula or whatever is nourishing to babies, to newborn babies. And then you can you can turn it into a milkshake. You can have loads of different flavors. You can use it in desserts. You can make ice cream with milk. Um, there's there's lots of different things you can do with milk so it's versatile i got that vers the word versatility and the thought about how working with a working with a simple concept there's a simple concept that can become very versatile and then the thought came in about how can you adapt something plain common or simple to make it more interesting attractive appealing effective and then i specifically got the words growth and the word spectacular and seeing something in a new light so that's your pre-reading meditation. It may be a message in itself or it may connect with the whole reading. We'll find out, but that's that's where we begin. So these are the decks I'll be using. I'm going to start with a message from the Sacred Destiny Oracle and we'll get a Spirit Animal Oracle message at the end. So what do we need to know for Leo Sun, Moon and Rising for... My throat is hurting. It's ridiculous. I still... <laughs> it's still insane how that happened. But anyway... Um, Leo Sun, Moon and Rising for October 2024. And I may as well tell you, you can be the first to know that I've set myself up, well, the channel, well, not the channel, but the um, tarot on Instagram as well. Same name, Hummingbird Spirit Rising Tarot. I've posted the shorter videos that I did for mid-September there. And I'm aiming to do um, like cards of the day or messages of the day. So like just like one oracle card or something and a tarot card to go with it. And it will be like a the image and a, a written sort of message to go with it. So if you want to check that out, then just, you know, put the name Hummingbird Spirit Rising Tarot into Instagram. I'll probably try and put the links in the description box and wherever, wherever else. But 
yeah, that's that's where I'm taking things now because I like to have the option of doing the long readings and I enjoy the short readings as well. So it's just a couple of different options and I like doing the written type readings as well. So more variety and it will be more more content. Anyway. Right, so you have embracing, first of all, trust. Okay, embracing trust. I really love that trust. I mean, I like both of these images, but um, I really love this trust message. My screen is doing some weird ghost imagery. <laughs> it's a really nice image there. So embracing trust, embracing trust in what? Yourself. That's, that would be number one, wouldn't it? Embracing trust in yourself. I think that's reasonably clear, isn't it? Let's get your tarot cards out and then I will read those messages from the book for you. So what else do we need to know for Leo, Sun, Moon and Rising for October? Right, Leo, I'm also doing a new spread, so bear with me, I, yeah. I started off, I did the first six videos in my old spread and then I just thought this doesn't doesn't feel right, I'm not happy with it and then I just made a new one up and just did the rest of the videos using this new spread so I quite like it. Right, let me put the these cards here to start with, I just need four more. So one, two, four. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute and then I take the bottom ones as like an underlying energy. Okay, so right, and then these are like the main energies for each part of the spread. Right. So your main energy here is that, whoa, okay. Well, that are they are birds of a feather, aren't they? The queen of swords and the king of swords. You can't really argue with that. That's interesting. That is very interesting. Okay. Right, let me look at the messages in the book. So starting with embracing. So floodplains. A floodplain is a naturally occurring phenomenon in which the land adjacent to a river floods out to far banks of the surrounding land during times of high water. Land that is normally dry may be underwater for a period of time. When this occurs, silt, sand and nutrients are deposited. For this reason, floodplains are often areas of great fertility as well as rich ecosystems. They are excellent areas for lush, abundant crops. It is a natural occurrence that allows life in all areas to thrive. The sacred landscape wants you to know sometimes life overflows with emotions which can feel uncomfortable. However, the ensuing result of this discomfort can be of great value, perhaps arising from an unseen or unknown source. You get this card when emotions are seemingly overflowing or not flowing at all. Just bear with me a minute. I need a break because my throat is feeling weird. Okay, so cherish the overflow of emotions and embrace the times that seem murky for your inner floodplains are being replenished and as a result, there will be great spiritual and physical expansion. Embrace all your emotions. When you do so, greater prosperity and fertility will flow into your life. Alternatively, if your emotions have been blocked, this is the time to explore and experience them. That's very interesting. In terms of the whole trust thing as well, the Queen of Swords, King of Swords, they are like out of all of the king and queen, kings and queens that could have come up. That to me, they would be most associated with the words trust because when you think of trust, you think of truth and honesty as well, don't you? So, I like the fact that they've come up and it is giving. I mean, they are masculine and feminine. Is there something here about needing to embrace trust in your masculine and feminine side or your masculine and feminine truth? something around that let's have a look at that trust card now desert vision the desert seems parched and devoid of all life of life not all life yet it is to the desert that spiritual sojourners go to gain messages from the creator 
Traditionally, the desert is the place of spiritual cleansing, renewal and profound healing visions. Just as desert terrains can feed our souls, they also nourish lands thousands of miles away. For example, the Sahara Desert and the Amazon Rainforest are a great distance from each other. One is a vast dry area of sand and scrub while the other is moist, lush and green, and yet they are connected. Annually, thousands, thousands of tonnes of nutrient-rich dust from the Sahara crosses continents in the upper atmosphere and deposits vital phosphorus and other minerals to the Amazon, which is needed, needful for those exact nutrients. The sacred landscape wants you to know. This is a powerful and important card to receive. Even when things seem parched or not fruitful, a deeper energy speaks of the power, speaks of the power of your inner knowing. Meditate. Trust those nudges from the universe. Your celestial advisors are close now. You are now open to receive some of the most important messages of your life through your intuition. That is a connection to the source as well, isn't it? Intuition. Your intuition is spot on, so trust it. And even if there are some areas of your life that seem lacklustre, know that other areas are being fertilised for a resplendent future. Have faith and know that there is a higher purpose. I really like that message. I mean, I know we haven't really got into it properly yet, but um, I quite like that. So let's look at the King and Queen of Swords. And as I said, is this where you embrace that intuition, the masculine side of it, the feminine side of it? It's like complete, it's whole the yin and yang it's like you have your truth you have your story and you know what you're going to do with it as well because the queen has the story she sh yes she shares it and she listens to others but the king is the one who he's the he's the ruler in the tarot isn't it he's the ruler he he kind of create he initiates change um creates structures etc so it's like as I say having the truth having your story and knowing what you're going to do with it knowing what your place in the world is even and trusting that really really trusting it so let's get cards for the queen of swords and king of swords please we got the ten of cups it did speak of embracing all of your emotions didn't it and ten of cups part of your truth is what makes you happy what like that's that's one thing that you'd consider as part of your tree wealth that's one thing i'd consider what makes you happy so there's a spectrum and it's interesting you've got a rainbow there because do we, what's something we say we say all um oh, what is it how would you say is it the colors on the spectrum of the rainbow or this color spectrum of the rainbow something like that but what makes you happy what your fears are these are part of your truths or truth Ten of Wands, what feels like a burden to you. It could even be what do you need to let go of that feels like it's interfering with your happiness as well and your truth. You've got the Queen of Swords again, double confirmation. The truth of who you are. Nine of Pentacles just tried to come out then. Knowing something about knowing the truth of who you are, right? You've got the Nine of Wands, that feels like you fears as well. The Wheel of Fortune. So as I say, overall, it's like the whole a, a spectrum of emotions that, that help you to know what your truth is. Again, I'll just reiterate what makes you happy. What's hold, I'll say what's, it can be the fears, but what's holding you back. What feels like burden. But it's also, it's actually, it's, it, I think it's more along the lines of the challenges you've overcome. That's what that feels like with the Ten of Wands, because that's part of your truth as well. It does feel like, I mean, it can be for someone, it might be what your burdens are, but it feels like, because the challenges can be burdens, can't they? It's the challenges you've overcome to get to this point where you really know your truth and your story. And another, look, she's got a sword as well in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, how, so how you, you've got your truth there, you know your story, who you are, what you've been through and how you want to use that to change things. As I said, the king is the one that would take, make the changes in the world. Um, the nine of ones, I mean, it can be the fears. That can be the fears. We've got two cards relating to fears here as well and that's all part of your truth. What else do you need to overcome? That's what you've already overcome, the challenges you've already overcome. 
what else do you need to um to stand up to now what else do you need to to be ready to to fight for now i know that normally it would probably be the seven of ones that would be more than that would be more along that line of energy but the nine of ones for me the nine of ones and seven of ones are very similar i think the only difference is the seven of ones hasn't gotten to the point of being worn out yet <laughs> whereas the nine of ones is like it's still ready to fight but it's like barely still standing because well no it's not even sometimes it is that they're barely still standing and sometimes it's just that they've already been to war like the seven of ones is like a fresh soldier <laughs> and then the nine of ones is the one who's already had many battles and he's got his battle scars so he's, he's got experience if that makes sense so let's put these here So I would say embracing trust in your truth and your story is a part of things here. Actually, let me no, I'm going to leave that. I like I kind of like looking at them at the angle. Just those I won't do to all of them. Right. Next, we have the past here. So we've got the nine of swords and the queen of pentacles. Again, this is part of your truth. So what are the stresses and anxieties that you had to overcome to get to the point where you know you know what your values are? because that's what that's done for you. I mean, yes, nobody wants to be anxious and stressed out, but that does teach us valuable things and it teaches us what our values are as well. And it teaches us to trust ourselves too. So nine of swords, queen of pentacles. Hanged man, that is spiritual development. That would be what happens when you go through certain experiences and you, you know what your values are, you know what your beliefs are, you know what you stand for. Seven of Cups, Temperance, bear with me, I just need a drink because my throat is getting weird again. So yeah, through through that spiritual development as well, you, you learn, when you learn more about who you are and what your values are, what your beliefs are, what you stand for, then you can make decisions about what dreams you want to follow, what you want to do, what you love. I've got a thought on Temperance, but let me just get a couple more. Oh, that's a creation, isn't it? There can be something about creation here. When you know who you are again, you learn about what you want to create in life. Yeah, I think it's about creation. I was going to say it could be about what... I mean, yes, it will be. You, you learn what makes you feel at peace, what brings you harmony, or what you need to do to create harmony, but it's also what you want to create in life in general. You learn... I feel like saying about healthy relationships with that three of pentacles and not just with people, with anything, with situations, with things. You learn what works and what doesn't basically with that three of pentacles being there, what works for you and what doesn't, what's in alignment with your values and what isn't when you're engaging with the world, engaging with anything outside of yourself. So that's what you've gained from the past. Next, we're going to look at the challenge, which is the Five of Swords. Five, oh, God. You know what? I'll be honest with you, Leo. So I, I do a reading for myself before, and meditation as well, like my own meditation before I do the reading so that I can sort of clear out anything that's just for me and then it doesn't um, overtake the reading I'm doing for someone else it's like it's like clearing the decks um well literally clearing the decks and clearing my mind so that I'm, I'm open to receiving for whoever I'm reading for and it's not my stuff coming in however as a reader if you're a reader as well you'll know that whenever you do readings for people you're always going to get a message yourself as well you'll get some insight regarding your own life um when you're reading for someone else and vice versa too. If someone's reading for you, they're very likely to get an insight for themselves as well from your reading. This energy, especially that Five of Swords, Page of Swords, that came up for me today. I use completely different decks, so it's nothing to do with the deck. That Five of Swords, Page of Swords, it's, um, so as I said, it's a challenge and it's learning how, to, it can be learning how to interact with others in the world in certain situations. Um, in a way where you trust yourself more. Let me get more clarification on the five of ones, five of, sorry, five of swords is at the bottom of the deck. That's crazy. Right, five of swords, page of swords. That's crazy. I swear to God, in my reading, the six of, I'm pretty sure the six of ones clarified this as well. 
was the first card out. I don't think, I think the Four of Swords was in the reading, but in a different position, but that Six of Wands, it's being seen and heard. And it's about being yourself and being authentic and being respected. So we have the Four of Swords as well now. Anything else? And you probably already know if you've seen the channel, I am a Leo moon and rising, so it does it does make sense that the reading would, I'd connect with the reading as well. We've got the chariot, we've got the three of swords, okay. There's a need to move on from old stories here, with that three of swords, the chariot there. It's like rising above things. I can see that, like, going, and it's not, is it in the future? Let's see, these are your future cards. Okay. I feel like saying un unforeseen changes in how you collaborate, whether it is with people or in situations or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it's moving on from the old stories and healing even, four of swords, three of swords, that's healing from old stories. In situations maybe where you weren't seen and heard, and learning and considering what your role was. Like, did you play it small? Like, did you play it small? Did you not stand up for yourself? I'm not blaming you for everything because obviously we're all, we all play a role in a situation. Like even if you, if we're, if we're in a um, toxic friendship with someone, yes, there is gonna be someone, there may be someone who's kind of the bully and then someone who's the victim, but we're all kind of participants in that. We all have our role in that, you know, there's the person that does the bullying, there's the person that maybe needed to learn. Part of the thing that they the, that they took from that experience is learning how to stand up for themselves more or be more assertive, be more confident, do you know what I mean? So it's not about blame, but there's, there are certain things we can take from each experience, but there's something here with needing to interact differently where you you are seen and heard more and appreciated more as well, not taken advantage of. That's a challenge. But it's, um, as I say, it's going to be overcoming those old stories around that. And as I say, the trust is a big part of that. When you know who you are and you trust in yourself and who you are and what you're doing, it's kind of like an automatic weapon that can um, defeat that, which Five of Swords is a defeat type of energy, isn't it? But you'll be the one that defeats the... Um, what gets thrown at you. So let's look at the hanged man. These are external influences, yep. So the hanged man, again, it's that spiritual development, it's your beliefs, it's what you've learned from your experiences, both there. The five of swords is, is the exterior challenges that will challenge you, that will challenge your beliefs, it will challenge your trust in yourself. So let's get a few clarifiers on that. Yeah, that's um that can be where people try to stab you in the back and it may even be as an external factor situations currently that have stabbed you in the back or painful situations that you are wanting to end or ending to be honest because you know that you 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 want to be treated better or you want better from yeah justice is there you want better from situations in your life you want better experiences and more respect We have the Knight of Cups. And the one of the positive or more positive things about that as well, once again, once you know who you are, you trust yourself and you cut the, the bullshit out of your life. It makes you feel more free in terms of pursuing your dreams. I mean, you can pursue your dreams anyway, but the energy that it takes dealing with bullshit can distract you massively from your dreams sometimes. You know, like when someone's in... in um in a job that they that is really demanding or toxic or whatever and they have other dreams and it's just like because of the energy it takes to deal with the toxic work environment or whatever what energy is left to pursue your dreams none or well, not very much it's um it's tough let's just get one more so we've got the two up oh, okay up 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 right Again, energy of moving on, six of swords moving on, two of wands, a sense of freedom, freedom to expand, freedom to make your own choices. And that's a part of this as well in terms of trusting. When you trust in yourself, you don't 
fear making choices as much. Yes, you may still get anxious and scared, but it's there's more determination. Once determination, there's more determination to do that. Travel comes here as well because we've got six of swords, two of one. So somebody could be physically traveling. That that kind of makes me think of a holiday as well. Anybody going on holiday? Egypt maybe <laughs> with that kind of um imagery because it looks kind of like a postcard actually, doesn't it? Let's look at the, so this is like whatever's, it's anything that you need to be more aware of. So it could be something unknown, something hidden. I feel like saying that you, in the present, you, as part of this process of trusting more in yourself and embracing all of your feelings as well in relation to that card, you could still be juggling situations and people from the past here. Um, and that that's just part of the process. So two of pentacles, six of cups, anything specific? Right, we've got ace of pentacles. I will keep that, the king of wands. There is something about creating new opportunities for yourself as well, whether it is with people, situations, things that can help you to grow and expand, physical things as well, material things, so that can be career related or related to your path or purpose judgment it's part of the process this is part of what's meant to happen that you learn from this and you reborn from that experience but the way that you're reborn is there is a stronger more powerful courageous energy more will i think this is a common theme actually in terms of rebirth for everyone at present because obviously with the whole pluto thing it's impacting everyone um and we hopefully we're coming out stronger and knowing who, more of who we are and what we want to do and our place in the world. Let's get one more. I think with that two of pentacles as well, as I said, you may be juggling old situations. It's about deciding as well what you want to give you, what you want to focus on and what you want to give your time and effort to and what you need to drop because yes, we are capable of juggling things, but you, you got to decide, well, do I really want to be focusing on that or would I prefer to give all of my energy to that? So you get to decide. Nine of Swords. There is some stress and worry about it. You might fear. Hmm. What might you fear? Let's get one for that. What do you fear? Making a mistake or something? Because judgment is decisions as well. Do you fear making a mistake? Or getting getting things wrong or fear okay, King of Swords, fearing that you don't know enough, that you're not wise enough, that you haven't learnt enough yet. And I have been talking about trust this whole time, haven't I? So so maybe that's part of it is worrying that you um that you don't trust yourself enough yet. And to be frank, it's gonna we're gonna if we're learning to trust ourselves more, I think that's something that we'll probably go through our whole lives. I don't think it's a case of you get to one point in your life where it's like, right, the lesson now is that you learn to trust yourself. And then once that's done, that's it for the rest of your life. I don't think it works like that. I think there's different levels of how much you trust yourself and it continues probably until the day that you die, to be honest, um, where it just gets greater and greater, like it expands and there's no end to how much more you can trust yourself because there's always going to be different situations, scenarios, people in your life and they're going to bring out different sides of you and say even if you're someone who's highly confident and you really trust yourself, you could get into a situation or meet a person that kind of I feel cruel saying this actually brings you down a peg and I don't mean that to mean that you're arrogant at all but it could just be something about that situation just knocks your confidence and makes you feel like, oh, OK, I need to trust myself more, even though you already trust yourself quite a lot. So there's room, there's more, always more room for growth. But as I say, there might be a bit of worry that you're not where you need to be, but it's just a constant process, isn't it? It's continual growth. It is continual growth, so... Let's look at the Three of Pentacles, which is a future energy. And what did I say about this originally? Um, something unknown about the collaborations or the way you collaborate with people. Um, let's see what comes up when I clarify this. 
there may be a collaboration coming up in the future that you're not quite aware of or you don't know all the details of just yet. So whether that's literally working with people or it's a situation where you need to bring things together to make it work. Four, oh, okay, four of one, six of cups. So for someone, at least, I did mention something about juggling old situations. This to me, with the four of ones and six of cups, shows that there's already a foundation here. So it might be that you, there's something about the collaboration that will, it's going to operate in a different way in the future or something's going to be uncovered about it. Well, it might be the, the transformation card, death, so change. It will change in some way, but there's something that will be, it, it will be revealed about that. Something will either be revealed about that or it will reveal something about you, something you'll find that something's revealed about you probably to yourself unless it's that you reveal something to others in this new sort of, if you're in a, say if you're in a more powerful state of trusting yourself, you reveal that version of yourself to others or in situations and it makes everything work better. So it's a transformation either way. Let's just get one more after that death card. The moon is back again, the empress. You may be called to be a more authentic version of yourself in the future if you want things to work out better with the Empress and the Moon card there. If you want things to run more smoothly, to be more successful, etc. Yeah, you may be called to be more authentic. And as I say, it's going to relate to something where there's already an established foundation, whether it's a particular situation or relationship with a person, it's going to transform or it's going to need to transform at the very least. And the way to transform it is through, through authenticity. You can't even say the word right now. So let's look at your guidance. You've got the star. It's just even looking at the star and touching it, the first thing I'm getting is be true to who you are. God, that sounds really corny, doesn't it? The star, be true to who you are. <laughs> and then we have the, oh, the page of cups. And to me, the page of cups can very much be about authenticity because it connects to vulnerability, doesn't it? So... It's like that page of cups energy, that little kid is just, their heart is on their sleeve, it's worn on their sleeve. And don't hold back from your dreams as well, and being who you are with that the um, star and the page of cups. Anything else? Eight of swords, don't hold back, don't hold back. Ten of pentacles, what is it, what is your greatest wish and vision for the future, for the life that you want? Like, what do you what do you want to build? What are you aiming for? What's your biggest goal? And it doesn't have to be just one thing, like, overall. Like, when you put everything together, like, I know, uh, even I say sometimes, like I say, God, I hope if I go, if I get asked the question, what do you, where do you see yourself in five years? I hope nobody asks me that question, because on one part of me thinks it's a really stupid question, because, how the hell are you supposed to know where you're going to be in five years? All sorts of things could change. We don't even know if the planet's going to be here in five years. So on the one hand, it sounds like a stupid question. But on the other hand, it encourages you to, to um, contemplate what your vision is for yourself and your life. And it doesn't have to be about monetary success, does it? It could be about anything. Like one of my visions would be in five, year time, five years time, maybe... I'd like to be married. I'd like to live in a luxurious home. I mean, I'm, to be frank, I'm not even that money motivated, but I love home. So if I was going to have anything that cost a lot of money in my life, it would be a lovely home just because it would be, I could decorate it really nicely and have lots of space. I would have three more children. I've got one already. I'd have three more children. I'd have six cats. I'd have a house big enough that my mum could live in it and have her own little separate quarters with her own like little kitchen and unsweet and whatever um that would be part of my vision I'd be doing more spiritual work and that would be like my main thing in my life and developing that even further I'd write some fiction maybe that's my vision and so yeah it could be anything couldn't it but let's um let's continue that would be my ten of pentacles that would be what I'd be working to what what I am working towards and let's not even speculate about it this is what I am working towards that's the dream that's the vision 
and we have the Two of Pentacles and the High Priest. Oh, okay. That's a really... I like, I kind of like this, how this is feeling to me with the Two of Pentacles and the High Priestess. We can, when we have a vision, we can get a bit overwhelmed and kind of, we can get in the Eight of Swords energy when we think like, how the hell am I going to make that happen? Like me thinking about living in a luxurious home, I would automatically think, how the hell am I going to make that happen? I don't have the kind of money to buy a massive house and, and all that kind of thing. But we have to let our, our intuition and our heart guide us. And it's not to say that's a guarantee that it will happen, but we have to trust in our intuition to lead us in our life on a path. Once we've set our intentions as well, that will work out for the best for us, that we will get the happy, we will get happiness that we want. It may not come in the exact form that we want it, but we have to have that trust and that faith with the High Priestess and not get too wrapped up in, well, what do I have to do? I mean, yes, take action, take steps, make plans, but don't let it overwhelm you because the background in the, the Two of Pentacles is often very overwhelming and chaotic. So that's the guidance. Don't hold back from your dreams. And have trust, have faith, what's your vision, but don't get too caught up in the how is this, how is this going to work. Right, so I'm going to get you a final card from the Spirit Animal Oracle deck. I quite like this reading, Leo. It was a beautiful reading. Interesting. Um, what else do we need to know as final advice? Please, just one card because it's, my throat's hurting, so I can't read more than one card without making my voice work. Thank God. There's only one more reading after you, otherwise I'd have to, yeah, I don't know if I could carry on with my throat burning. Thank you so much, it's just one card. <laughs> so we have Rabbit Spirit, now is a lucky time. And again, you have to trust, that's the one thing that comes to mind straight up with that. So 49, ah, oh, you know what, I never even noticed that there are babies in this. I can't, what do you actually call, what's the name for baby rabbits? I don't know. But I didn't even realise that there were baby rabbits in the card. Anyway. So 49. That comes down to a 4, doesn't it, I think? 9 plus 4 is 13. And then 1 and 3 is 4. And that is to do with home and foundations and things like that. So it says... A sunny meadow calls and rabbit spirit appears to lead you out of your dark warren and into the light so that you can participate in a fertile and beautiful experience. It may seem safe below ground, but the magic happens when you come out and take the risk of being vulnerable and co-creating something new. That is literally the Page of Cups and the um, Star. You are being invited into a new life that you have no experience with, but have no fear. And just to point out, that would be one of the reasons that you could get overwhelmed and caught up in feeling like, how the hell would I make that happen? Because you've got no experience of it. So when you haven't got experience of something, it doesn't make sense, does it? Right, today is also a time to be fruitful and productive as you enjoy Rabbit Spirit's sunny and prolific energy. At this time, whatever you intend to bring to life will find fertile ground. There are no mistakes, really, when you are co-creating with Spirit, so let new ideas spring to the surface, knowing that now is a lucky time of tremendous possibility. The protection message says, vulnerability is required of you now, even if you don't feel safe. Act as if you trust that you will be okay and soon you will see that you are okay. To create is to take risks, so at this fortunate, fertile time, banish your fears and recognise the real security is in immersing yourself in the process of co-creation. It's okay to admit that you really don't know how to deal with whatever is in front of you. This is where curiosity and not knowing can be a wonderful state of mind. Be playful now, admitting you are at the beginning of something. Come on out to frolic in the sun's nurturing light, because it is time to birth something new. I really like that. And just as a closing, I would say that this whole message, it's about embracing trust in yourself and embracing trust in your vision as well. I'll leave that there for you, Leo. So yeah, I'll be back in a couple of weeks for mid-month check-ins. Um, I wish you all the best and I hope you have a great October. Until I see you next time, take care.